Our next speaker is India's gold finger, a beacon of global execution, and the first Indian to have won the individual gold medal at the Olympics. Abhinav was also the youngest Indian participant at the 2000 Olympic Games. He won six gold medals at various international meets and was honored with the Arjuna Award and the prestigious Rajiv Gandhi Kail Ratna Award besides the Padma Bhushan. In conversation with him today, we have Alexander David, director in the Radiant Group of Companies and working for one of its core companies, Radiant Cash Management Services Private Limited. Alumni of the Imperial College London, he's extremely fond of basketball, music, and he loves traveling. And he's also looking to promote talent and invest in startups in the near future. Today I'd like to uh, talk about something which is really important to each and every one of us. I'm sure everyone over here will agree with me, you know, no matter how much of money, power, influence we gather in our lifetimes on this planet, our health, our mortality always brings us back to Mother Earth, sometimes in a hurry. So my question is this, why do we have to start dying until we actually start taking care of our health? Why do we fall prey to our minds? to stop taking care of ourselves. Why can't we escape our comfort zones until it actually starts getting really, really uncomfortable for us? Why don't we emphasize physical wellness in our lives? So to understand this a lot better, today we have the honor and pleasure of having India's Olympic gold medalist to make us realize how important physical wellness is in our day-to-day -day lives. So hi Abhinav, welcome to the Radiant Wellness Conclave 2019. Thank you, thank you for having me. So just to start off, you know, as Abhinav Bindra, a winner, an icon, an Olympic gold medalist, how would you define physical wellness? Well, of course it is the obvious, I mean, it is taking care about your health, it is uh, uh, taking care about how you, what you eat, how you sleep, but uh, I think it is to me, it is more about finding a balance between mind and body and finding that synchronization between mind and body. It is also about finding your passion and then respecting your passion, right. not giving it too much, but not giving it too less, finding the right balance between the two. You know, I think uh, I didn't do that too well in my career. I was a very obsessive person and uh, I think I gave it too much, but I think finding balance in what you do is, I think, critical to physical well-being. See, that's interesting when you say that because when it comes to physical wellness, a lot of people always think of the body, you know, but a lot of people also forget it's a lot to do with your mind. Your mental conditioning has to be on the same level as your body, sometimes even more so. So in a sport of perfection, like shooting, how do you train your mind, you know, to overcome mental barriers like, you know, distractions, anxiety, you know, things like that? Well, I don't think you, I, at least I did not ever overcome them. I was somebody who was always assailed by anxiety. Um, you know, before a competition, you'd find me in the, in the bathroom because I was so nervous. And it was difficult to get me out of there before the start of competition. Um, but I think it boils down to accepting it and um, not resisting it. I think when you compete, when I competed in three Olympic finals, and I think they were probably, I never felt so alive ever in my life because, you know, my heart was beating at 180 and I had to stand as still as death. Um, but I think it is about accepting situations and not resisting them. The moment you accept it, and I think you just find a way to, um, to, to work with it. It also boils down to, to courage. I think you need to have immense amount of courage when, when you're under pressure. Um, and determination, and uh, you know, determination towards your goal, and, 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 and trying to be, and trying to live, live each moment, and um, not really be focused on outcomes, but be focused on the process. And that's what I tried to do, and I think that was the only way I could overcome um, or, or deal with the pressures or the anxiety, which, which, which is part and parcel of uh, high performance or you know, anything what you do when you're trying to pursue excellence. I think you will, you, will have, you will have to encounter all these challenges, and you just have to find a way to, to navigate them. So just to uh, 
more go do, deeper into what you just said. You're in the game, you're in the tournament, and your opponent is taking a big lead. You've had a bad couple of shots, you know. So at that point of time, as you just said, your heart is racing, you know. And at that point of time, how do you tell your mind, okay, just let's be calm, let's be focused, let's focus on the other shot at that point of time, you know, during the big game? Well, you're hoping and praying that the other person screws up, uh, but, um, <laughs> but more than that, I think uh, it is about focusing on your own self. You know, I don't have control on the other person's performance. The only thing I can control is my own self and uh, just uh, being focused on each shot and, and, and not looking too far ahead or not looking at the past, but just trying to remain in the mo moment and giving each moment the best that you can. And that's what I pretty much try to do. Um, and, you know, some days I succeeded, most times I failed, but um, it was about trying to stay in the moment, trying to do the best in, uh, in every possible shot. And I think it is something that you train for. I think, you know, the Olympics come once in four years, but for us athletes, it is pretty much every single day. Uh, you know, you have to bring your best foot forward to, the game, to, to, to each day of training uh, and live your life that way. And when, when you're able to do that, you just learn to, to stay in the moment and, and be detached from outcomes and remain um, process-oriented. I think that is critical. Amazing. So I wanted to ask you this, like in 2008, before that last shot, you know, before the final shot, 10 minutes, what was your headspace at? Like, what were you thinking? What were you doing? Do you remember? Do you recall that? Like, how were you feeling at that point of time? Panic attack. Um, <laughs> but, um, but I think it was, uh, um, you know, I was extremely nervous. Uh, I was, um, but again, it was, it was a matter of trying to remain in the moment, not, uh, when I went into Beijing and you, 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 you talk about, uh, about my success in Beijing. I was very detached from the outcome. And that actually came from, that was actually born out of loss, out of failure. I had been to the 2004 Olympic Games and uh, um, had broken an Olympic record, but then I, but I finished seventh at the Games in 2004. And uh, a few days after my event, they realized that the platform I was standing on had a wobbly floor, and, uh, which reverberated every time I shot. Uh, so that made me very bitter, that made me very disappointed, it, it broke me, but it, it helped me, st uh, it, re it really helped me become detached from outcomes. And I was very, very detached from outcomes. My goal in Beijing was to give my best every single shot, and you know, I looked at every single shot as a new opportunity. And uh, as long as I did the best that I could do, um, I think that was the most important thing. Winning came, was, was, was born out of that, and uh, it was about being the best that I could be. Uh, and if I did that, I was a winner in my own eyes. And I think that was the most important thing. So, uh, when it comes to physical well-being, you know, like today, I see a lot of parents, you know, the second fiddle it, you know, it takes a back seat when it comes to their kids, you know, because in their eyes, they would rather choose the most stable option like the IITs or the Bitspilanis or the AIMS, you know. And even like when I was done with my schooling, people were like, yo, you just, get done with your degree and then you do what you want, then you follow your passion, you know. So I believe you've been someone who's been so encouraged by your parents, so much supported and I guess that has really worked out well for you. So what kind of advice would you like to give parents out there, you know, today about, you know, their kids? And Honestly, what you bring up is not the worst advice. I think education is something which is very important. I think even if you're pursuing sport, I think to have an education is, is critical because you know, a very, few, uh, a very small percentage of people would actually succeed. And it is important to have something to, to fall back on. Um, and if you're passionate enough, you, you, you will find a way to do both. Uh, and that's exactly what I did. Uh, I was very passionate about my sport, but education was something which was equally important. Um, it was tough, but, but I found, my, found a way through. Of course, my parents were, somebody, were people who were extremely, extremely supportive. Uh, of course, they helped me, um, helped me uh, go to tournaments, train, and, and helped me uh, financially. Uh, but, you know, money was just an enabler. Um, but I think that the biggest thing that they did for me was believe in me. Uh, in most parts of my career, I probably didn't believe in myself. Uh, you know, I felt hopeless every, probably every second day. But whenever I felt hopeless, my parents saw a lot of hope in me. Uh, and I think that was something which was very, very critical. They were extremely positive. They had a lot of belief in me, which, uh, uh, which I don't know how, but they did have that. Um, they also gave me, gave me a lot of space. 
they, they let me make my mistake, my own mistakes, and, and I think that was critical. Uh, you know, success is al always, I think, is born out of failing well. I think you have to use failure as, as information and uh, learn from it and, um, you know, let go of the unwanted baggage and move on. And that's what I tried to do, and that was the environment that was fostered back home, and that's what I encourage all parents to do is, is to believe in their kids, uh, but however, give them their space to, to make their own mistakes, follow their own passion, they have to find their own way, uh, and just keep encouraging them. Wow. So, uh, when it comes to physical wellness, uh, or physical well-being of any individual, today when I look at interviews of the greats out there, like the Michael Jordans, or the Sachin Tendulkars, or the Roger Federers, they all talk about one particular thing, you know, work ethic, consistent discipline and work ethic. So, what is it like in the day of Abhinav Bindra when he's preparing for a tournament or even off-season wise? You take names of greats, but it's probably an appropriate time to tell you all how I started my sport. Um, you know, I, I, was a, I was a young kid, 12 or 13 years old, and at that point of time in my life, I actually hated sport. Um, you know, I was a champion at that time in missing physical education classes at school. So. I can safely say I wasn't the uh, best ambassador for physical wellness at that point of time. Uh, but um, I, when I was in school, my parents, my father used to write me a letter every single day and that was to play sport. Of course, I didn't ever uh, listen to him, but I tried my hand at every, little, every sport and I wasn't really good at it. And one fine day, I was uh, introduced to the sport of shooting. And I went to my first coach and uh, I, I loved the sport because to be successful in shooting, I had to stand still uh, and not move around. So that was, that was, uh, that was the start uh, of my, my career. I wasn't uh, particularly talented, I wasn't athletic, I wasn't coordinated, but I did have one talent and that was to work hard. Uh, and um, that's what I pretty much did for 20 years of my life, that was to just push myself, push myself every single day to be the best version of myself. Um, and, uh, that is the only, that, was, that is, I think, hard work is the, is, is the only shortcut to success. That there is no other way. So, when I look at shooting, invariably I see a lot of athletes have some kind of connection with the armed forces, whether it's the police or the army. So, did you have any connection to the army or any kind of connection at all? No, not really. Um, you know, it again boils down to the story which I just uh, told you. It was... Um, it was just by chance that I picked up the sport of shooting. It was something that I, I was looking for a hobby to do and, and, and I got introduced to my first coach and uh, the fat boy found his calling. So that was, that was the way I started. I, I know this question you must be hearing a lot and a lot of people always ask you this, but I, I have to ask you this. What makes you such a perfectionist? Well, I think chasing perfection is sort of like it's chasing like an untamable beast. I don't think you can never be perfect, but I think, but, you know, I think that attitude was born out of my own self-doubts. Um, you know, shooting was a lonely sport, but self-doubt was my constant companion. Uh, but, you know, I, I think that is the reason why I, I kept pushing myself for more. My insecurities uh, and the lack of confidence that I had in myself pushed me to work harder and, and to try and take every possible variable out of the equation while preparing for an event. And I, that's, that's, how I, I, that's how I try to, to look at every little thing um, to try and be perfect on the imperfect day. You know, you can have plan A, and, but you know, when you go into competition, invariably you're at plan D, which, uh, which comes through. And you know, it's a lot to do with adaptability. Um, you have to learn to adapt to different situations. Uh, and that is what sport teaches you, to, to keep adapting to different uh, situations and, and, and work your way through them. Uh, talking about um, trying to take what every possible variables out of the equation, that's pretty much what I did through, through my career. I mean, you, I talked about the Athens experience with the wobbly floor, so while preparing for Beijing, I actually trained on a, on a wobbly surface, uh, trying to take that variable out of the equation. Um, I got my brain mapped, for example, I went to a laboratory where um, I, I did the thousand shots and they saw what sort of brain activity I had when I was shooting well. So I tried to, to get into that, that space uh, while trying to prepare for, for, for the Olympic Games. 
I uh, meditated and visualized in samadhi tanks, which is which has you know uh, uh, tanks with thousand kgs of salt, and you become you float on them, and I, I visualized uh, in them, um, looking in. I'll give you another small example. Um, while preparing for the Olympics in Beijing, uh, you know, the Beijing Olympic final hall was this massive space, was this massive arena, and I'd ever, never ever shot in such a big arena. And uh, um, shooting is a sport which requires an immense, immense amount of balance, and um, you, know, you need reference points, and you know, when you're in this large hall, the hall was probably 100 times bigger than this hall, and, and that can be something which uh, can put you, put you off. So while preparing for Beijing, I actually hired a marriage hall back in Chandigarh uh, and converted that into a shooting range. And that, by the way, is the closest I've come to marriage. Um, mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I tried to do all of that and tried to, uh, tried to put, take every variable out of the equation. Um, going into Beijing, the you know, ammunition is critical in my sport and um, the Chinese ammunition at that point of time was extremely good and it was it had a distinct advantage over others of course the chinese never sold it to anybody else so i managed to smuggle some out of china and 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 and, and get it back home and probably that was a bigger victory than my gold medal itself um, so i did all of this um, to just try and take every variable out of out of the equation it was try it was an attempt to prepare to the best of my ability and that's what i did So uh, when it comes to physical well-being, I just wanted to ask you one thing. A lot of people, including myself, we all struggle so hard when it comes to losing weight, gaining muscle, following a strict diet. I know from personal experience like how difficult it is to have the same amount of motivation you have from day one to like after a couple of weeks it starts really fizzling out. So anything you'd like to advise our audience members or even the folks watching back home of how to just grind on, grind on till you reach your goal? Well, I think you have to do it for yourself. I think you have to do it for, for, for your health. And I think there's nothing more important than your own health. So I think that there cannot be a bigger motivation than that. You can be extremely successful. You can earn a lot of money. You can earn a lot of fame. But if you don't have health, you have nothing. So I think it is about doing it for your own self and, and, uh, and keep, uh, keep, keep at it. I think, uh, I think often success in life is about doing the boring and the mundane well. And I know that sometimes, um, you know, training and, 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 and giving yourself time to, to exercise a little bit gets boring and mundane, but uh, you just got to do what you've got to do. So I think we spoke a lot about physical wellness and well-being. I wanted to really ask you this one question, though. See, in a country like ours, cricket is religion, you know. Uh, it's a good thing I'm an atheist then. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. That's pretty good. That's, that's good. Uh, so, uh, hockey is doing well. Recently, we saw PV Sindhu dominated in badminton, you know. But uh, I feel in a country the size of ours, of 1.2 billion people, only 28 Olympic medals, I think we can do so much better. So, what do you feel the government should do, or even the corporates, you know, the private sector, what do you think we should do to improve this statistic, you know? Do you think this trend is going to change? I think it's, it's a complicated answer, but I'll try and attempt it. Um, you know, I think. You know, there's often talk about investment in sport and, you know, how much money is spent by Western countries on each medal they spent. So, of course, but quoting large amounts of money is, is a lazy answer. I think money is important and it is an enabler, but I think there's much more to it. I think sport in India has to become a social activity. Um, I think more people need to go out and play sport, not for the competitive nature of sport, but for just for the fun of it, just for the sheer joy of playing a sport. I think that will teach us how to win as a people, which will more importantly teach us how to lose. Uh, and I think that is something which will have a great societal benefit. And once that starts to happen, once you know, parents start taking their kids out to play on a weekend rather than going to the movies, I think that is when real change will tri be triggered. And once that starts to happen, I think um, we, that will automatically uh, help our, help our um, medal count in, in, the, in the larger picture. So I think more and more work is happening in, in, in the field of sport. I think we have a young demographic and sport is becoming an increasingly important part of our, uh, of our people. Uh, but I think it has to be a collective uh, 
uh, approach by everybody. I think, you know, we talk about corporate support. Of course, corporate support is important. Um, the United States, for example, the U.S. government does not even spend one dollar in the preparation of their Olympic team. It all comes down to corporate support, which funds the U.S. Olympic Committee. But I think each one of us can contribute to development of sport. Uh, I think each one of you can actually start going, in, going out and watching sport. And it's not about just going and watching a cricket game, but imagine if there's a district competition or, or, or a state championship happening in, in, your, in your area, go and watch it. Uh, I mean, you know, we have, we, how many of you knew of a Deepa Karmakar before she became, came forth at the Olympics in Rio? Not too many. Um, I competed for 20 years in, in India with not one person watching me in the stands and then I had to go to the Olympics and had 10,000 people watching me. It was overwhelming. So each of you can actually make an immense contribution to sport in India but by just going and watching sport. I think that is extremely important. I totally agree. I totally agree. So my last question to wrap up our conversation. Today I feel there is no higher recognition for a sports athlete to achieve in his field than an Olympic gold medal. So what's next for Avinav Bindra? What's keeping your focus? How do you see yourself in another 10 years? Well, of course, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty involved in sports still. Uh, I set up a foundation which works at the element of science and technology into sport. I believe um, not much of work has happened uh, in India looking at the scientific planning and the scientific support that athletes need. So I've set up these high performance centers which actually work on the element of science and technology. I give out scholarships to young, young grassroots level athletes Amazing. between the age of 12 and 17, uh, which work with the, the scholarship program. It's called the STEAM Scholarship Program, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Analytics, and Medicine. And we try and incorporate all of those elements into grassroots athletes because I believe once we start focusing on the grassroots, that's where we can change the whole ecosystem of sport in our country. Uh, I think not a lot of work is happening at the elite level. A lot of support is coming through to um, our, uh, our elite athletes, but not much being infiltrated down to the grassroots because working with the grassroots is a painful exercise. There's no instant gratification. Um, it, it requires perseverance and persistence for at least eight to ten years before we see any results coming through. But it is critical if we want to get to double digits at the Olympic Games or even further is, when we, is that we start to um, work at our grassroots levels and that's what I'm trying to do in my own way. Thank you, Abhinav. Thank you for your valuable inputs. I would request everyone to please give a big round of applause for our very own Olympic gold medalist. Thank you. Thank you.